Welcome back. So the next step is now to actually figure out when do we want to return all the orders because we probably don't want to do it all the time. What I'm talking about is pretty much when we get a list of all customers in our database, if we were to also get all the customers' orders, that would pretty much mean that we are starting to get all the information from the database with a single request. And that's just a lot of information and we don't need to get that much information. Think of it this way, if you were to look at a list of customers on a web page, you would expect to just get the information about the customers, right? Then maybe when I click a single customer, then I will get information about his orders, right? That's at least what I'm going to do right here. So I'm going to, instead of returning get all customers and then getting all their orders, I'm going to say when I get a single customer, then I return the orders. So notice right here, I have two requests available with a get request. One is actually getting all customers. I'm not going to change that. I don't want all the orders for the customer when I get all, all customers. I want all the orders when I get a single customer. So I'm going to jump into the customer service and change this now. But in order to kind of explain to you the difference, I'm going to keep this find customer by ID as it is, just keep it intact. And I'm going to jump into my customer service. And I'm going to create a new function, get all customers, uh, sorry, find by ID right here, uh, include orders like this. So I know it's a long, long method name, but I just want to kind of explain that we're going to build a new function right here that also includes the order, where this is not going to include any information right now about the actual information about the orders, and this is not either for now, okay? But this new one is going to actually include information about the orders, and it's fairly simple to do. So let's just try and do it. Jumping into our service, the actual implementation class is going to explain that we need to have this new function. So I'll just add the function right here, find customer by including uh, by ID, including their orders, and how do we actually do this? Well, it's, it's fairly simple. Step one is we're going to just make a local variable right here that's going to be the customer. It's going to be equal customer repo dot um, read by ID, just like we had before. And now I have the customer available, and I can actually just return the customer. Now, he doesn't have any orders yet, but that was step one. Now we have the customer just like we did up here, right? Now I want to add some more information to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say customer dot orders, right? I need the information about the orders is equal to, uh-oh, how do I get the orders? Hmm, I need to figure that out. It's a very simple way. Let me try and show you. So let's jump to our constructor right here because we, it's not enough for us anymore to have access to the customer repository, meaning the customer table. We also need access to our order table. So I'll just dependency inject my order right here. I order repository, order repository. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, and then I'll add a small reference for that. Order repo equals order repository. There we go. And I'll just make a field for that. I'll make it read only. That's pretty much pretty much meaning that now I have access to my order repository so I can start working with the order repository, the order table, right? I can start getting information from that. I can start making joins of the two tables when I need it. Sweet. Now this is going to be like you, I, I just want to give a side note here because you might notice that the constructor is going to start getting a lot of information in here. Later we're going to fix that with something called the unit of work. So don't worry, it's okay for now that you'll have a lot of repositories in your constructor. It will be fixed later. So let's just move down and have a look at our function again. What was the goal? The goal was to get a list of orders somehow. And you'll do that by saying, order repository, you need to help me. I need to get all orders where, right, where, and then I need to, for each order right here, I need to do a bit of magic. Let me just scroll out so you guys can see it. I say order dot customer, right? The customer on the order, I need to check his ID. If that ID matches the ID of the customer that I have right here, customer, that would be the right customer, right? There we go. Let me just try and do this in two lines so you guys can read it all. So pretty much what I'm saying is, Dear order repository, I need your help. I need you to go and get all orders where the customer ID matches the ID of the customer I have right here, right? That's pretty amazing. That's pretty much how an SQL statement would be anyway. So we'll try and make this even better when we get the unit of work, but this is fine for now. So I'll call two list in the end, kind of to convert this guy into a list. And now we have a customer with all his orders. That's all we had to do. Notice how simple it was. And notice the logic right here uh, some may discuss if this should go down to the repository, and you might be right in some cases, but I think working with this application right now, this makes perfect sense. It makes this unit testable, and I can actually work with a few very cool features later on right here, so I'm going to keep it like this. So let's just have a look if this actually works. 
So I'll just keep this and change my function inside the controller as the final thing right here in the customer controller. Instead of finding customer by ID, I'm just outcoming this so you guys can look at it. I'm going to change this now into returning and actually using the customer service dot find customer by order instead, uh, by ID, but including orders, right? Let's try and run this and see what happens. So I started our system right here. Let's just try and jump into our co uh, into Postman, just see when we get all customers. You'll notice right here, they don't have any orders, right? But if I go in and get a single customer, you'll notice that he does get his orders actually, if he has any. Now, if I get a customer without any orders, I do a request, he still won't have any orders, but it will just be a blank list right here. Now, there's also one more thing you need to know, and because we're using in-memory lists right now, and we are not copying or cloning our objects in any way, I actually just messed up my actual uh, objects in the in the database. So when I get all customers now, you'll notice that they actually contain orders. What the? What we just? We'll fix that in the next lesson. Have fun.